The top stories tonight and why news. The Philippine National Police defends the massive shakeup in the Davao City Police Office. The PNP receives information regarding the whereabouts of religious group leader Apollo Kibaloy following announcement of a 10 million peso reward for anyone who can provide information leading to his capture. Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH shares the est that est the, est the estimated cost for the new Senate building in Taguig City could reach 25 to 27 billion pesos due to inflation. And we will discover why Hezbollah leader Sayed Hassan Nasrallah stated that Hamas is negotiating a ceasefire with Israel on behalf of the entire axis of resistance. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, the 11th of June, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am RK Liorca. First in the news. The Philippine National Police has defended the massive shakeup in the Davao City Police Office. This follows the replacement of the city director for the third time, along with the removal of 19 station commanders from their posts. PNP Public Information Chief uh, Office Police Colonel Jean Fajardo stated that it is within the discretion of the new regional director to install a new set of commanders that he trusts. GPNP si General Marbil na binibigyan po niya ng apoder ang mga regional directors na mamili po ng kanilang mga provincial directors ng mga chief of police na sa tingin po niya ay uh, magagamit po at makakatulong sa programa. So this is not really limited sa, sa Davao City. Police Regional Office 11S Police Brigadier General Nicol Nicolas Torre has appointed po Police Colonel Hansel Marantan as the new director of the Davao City Police Office. Marantan is notably known for his involvement in the Atimonan rub out in Quezon in 2013, which resulted in the deaths of 13 individuals. In 2023, Marantan played a significant role as the head of CIDG NCR in enforcing search warrants on the property of former congressman Arnolfo Tevez. The United Nations signed a manifestation with the Department of Justice or DOJ today regarding the conduct of forensic examination on every prisoner's death under the Bureau of Corrections custody such as the new Belibid prison or NBP. Dante Amento tells us why. Even persons deprived of liberty or PDL should be afforded with respect and rights to justice. Thus, the Department of Justice or DOJ together with the University of the Philippines College of Medicine and the United Nations or UN Office on Drugs and Crime inked a declaration of cooperation. It aims to examine or autopsy every PDL that died while under custody of the Bureau of Corrections or Bucor to determine the cause of death. If you have TB in one enclosed space, then everybody is infected. And it's not just the PDLs at risk. What about the people who are employed and who work there? The DOJ as the lead investigator will bring all remains to the UP College of Medicine for forensic exams. They would have to be brought first to UP College Manila for, for, uh, for uh, uh, forensic examination and autopsy before they would eventually be transferred to the funeral home for embalming. Uh, that way, there would already be that uh, process by which we would be able to establish the true causes of uh, deaths. Meanwhile, the UN would provide assistance in terms of expertise, training, equipment, among others. The results of the autopsy can be used as evidence in court if necessary. It is also, also methodology and uh, the methodology is being setting up the procedures 
that uh, are needed in line with international standards to ensure the integrity of the evidence, that is, the chain of custody is protected so that the evidence ultimately can be used in judicial proceedings. The DOJ assures that even with or without foul play, an investigation will be conducted. Biocor Chief Pio Katapang disclosed an estimate of a thousand deaths in all Biocor facilities each year. Ngayon, uh, on the average, because uh, now from January to June, which is uh, almost half, oh, is, uh, half of the year, we already have four, 487. So more or less 1,000 per year ang namamatay sa Biocor. Uh, due to natural causes. Dante Amen to UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police has reportedly received information regarding the whereabouts of Apollo Kibaloy, the leader of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ or KOJC group. This follows the announcement of a 10 million peso reward for anyone who can provide information leading to his capture. PNP Public Information Office Chief Police Colonel Jane Fajardo stated that they are also considering offering a separate reward for information that leads to Kibaloy's arrest. The PNP is urging the public not to take the search for the televangelist lightly as the charges against them are serious. Uh, wag po natin kalimutan na yung kabilang parte po na sumisigaw po ng hustisya, may mga batang allegedly, di o mano, ay minulestya at uh, naging subject for trafficking. This is very serious uh, matter po, very serious offenses po. Kaya wag lang po sana yung side ng isa yung tignan natin. Tignan din po natin, may sumisigaw din po ng hustisya na mga magulang at mga kabataan at uh, yun po yung inihingi natin. Furthermore, Colonel Fajardo mentioned that there is no information from the Bureau of Immigration indicating that Kibaloy is in China. The PNP is also investigating whether he might have slipped through the back door. Breaking News the Police Regional Office 11, along with the Regional Intelligence Division, Special Action Force, and Criminal Investigation and Detection Group 11, arrested on Thursday, July 11, a co-accused of religious group leader Apollo Kibaloy. According to reports, the suspect was apprehended in Emily Holmes Subdivision, Davao City, around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The suspect, listed as the top six regional most wanted person in Region 11 is wanted for, for the crime of trafficking in persons. The arrested sus suspect is now under the custody of the Buhangin Police Station for proper doc documentation. The estimated cost for the new Senate building in Taguig City could reach 25 to 27 billion pesos due to inflation. In yesterday's hearing, Senator Alan Peter Cayetano pointed out that the figures submitted by the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH were based on costings in 2021. The agency noted that from 2021 up to now, the construction cost has increased by around 20 to 25 percent. In yung 2021 nyo, hindi pa nangyari ang Ukraine. 2022, humataw ang presyo ng uh, bakal at saka ng simento, di ba? Oh. And then, 2022, wala ng pandemic, may construction boom din. Aabutin po ng 25 to 27, including the, uh, the cost of land. Plus yung inflationary cost na po, kasama po. Cayetano has instructed the DPWH to recalculate the costings based on today's prices. The Senate Committee on Accounts is conducting a review of the new Senate building due to its supposed ballooning costs. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. continues to distribute aid to farmers and fishermen affected by severe drought due to the El Nino phenomenon. In this regard, the Department of Social Welfare and Development has issued a warning to government officials who may be interested in the cash assistance provided to the agricultural, agricultural sector. Nel Maribuhok reports. 
There are still attempts to reduce the 10,000 pesos of aid received by farmers and fishermen. This is according to Department of Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rex Gachalian. The secretary emphasized that no official is allowed to reduce the aid received by those in the agricultural sector. Nais ko samantala yung pagkakataon na linawin na kung ano ang natanggap niyong ayuda yung 10,000 sa inyo yun, bumbo. Walang may karapatan, walang may, uh, may kapangyarihan na bawasan yan kahit na nasa gobyerno pa sila. Today, President Marcos again distributed cash assistance and machinery to farmers and fishermen in the Calabar Zone region. The President specifically visited Batangas and Cavite. PBBM reassured continued support for the agricultural sector. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad, a United, a new United States air defense base in northern Poland is now operational, marking a significant enhancement to the missile defense capabilities of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. This base, a critical component of the Aegis Ashore system, is designed to intercept ballistic missiles and bolster trans transatlantic security. The announcement was made at the recent NATO summit. Paul Gachelian tells us why. A new U.S. air defense base in Redzikowo, Northern Poland, is now mission ready. This base is part of NATO's broader missile defense shield aimed at detecting and intercepting ballistic missile attacks. Jens Stoltenberg, NATO's chief, announced the base's readiness during a NATO summit in Washington. He emphasized the significance of this development for transatlantic security amid increasing ballistic missile threats. Stoltenberg highlighted that missile defense is crucial for NATO's collective defense especially given the widespread use of ballistic missiles in conflicts in Ukraine and in the Middle East. The Red Sea base houses the Aegis Ashore system, which is capable of intercepting short to intermediate range ballistic missiles. The missile defense shield is designed to protect European citizens, territory, and forces from ballistic missile attacks. NATO asserts that the Aegis Ashore system is purely defensive, Approximately 200 military personnel are stationed at the interceptor sites in Poland and Romania. Paul Gachalian, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Hezbollah well, leader Sayed Hassan Nasrallah has stated that Hamas is negotiating a ceasefire with Israel on behalf of the entire axis of resistance. He emphasized that the group would abide by any agreement reached by Hamas and that they would cease its operations against Israel without the need for separate talks. However, he also warned that Hezbollah was prepared for war and had demonstrated its capabilities through the recent rocket and drone attacks on Israel. The group initiated attacks on Israeli targets along the border in solidarity with their ally Hamas, which had launched an offensive against Israel on October 7th last year, sparking the Gaza conflict. Hezbollah's actions were intended to divert Israeli military resources away from Gaza and assist the Palestinians. As a result of the escalating tensions, tens of thousands of Israelis and Lebanese have been forced to evacuate the border area, on which international observers have expressed concern over the potential for a wider conflict. The Axis of Resistance is an alliance formed to, co to counter Israeli and American influence in the Middle East, which includes groups such as the Houthis in Yemen and Shiite militias in Iraq. Nasrallah's statement comes amid ongoing diplomatic efforts led by the U.S. and France to prevent a wider conflict between, between Israel and Hezbollah. Ukrainian President Vol Volodymyr Zelensky returned to the United States Capitol on Wednesday, seeking to strengthen relationships with lawmakers who will approve future aid for Ukraine amid uncertainty over the upcoming U.S. election that could affect support for Ukraine. Ruth Baha tells us why. 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met with United States Senate leaders and House of Representatives, as well as members of committees involved in defense, spending diplomacy and national security on Wednesday, July 10. The visit is seen as a crucial effort to ensure continued U.S. backing for Ukraine, which could be in jeopardy if former President Donald Trump, who has expressed skepticism about the level of aid, is re-elected. Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Mark Warner emphasized the importance of standing by Ukraine. Zelensky awarded Ukraine's Order of Merit to Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell and invited Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, a close Trump ally, to visit Kyiv. However, Johnson may struggle to make the trip before the November election when control of the House is at stake. Johnson initially opposed additional Ukraine aid but changed course in April, allowing a $61 billion package to pass the House. If the Republicans win the Congress, there are concerns they may not approve further Ukraine aid under a potential Trump presidency. Yet, Johnson recently stated Russia's threat extends beyond Ukraine and voters support the aid. Moreover, Zelensky urged U.S. leaders on Tuesday not to wait for the election outcome before providing more support and called for fewer restrictions on the use of American weaponry. Ruth Bahe, UNCV News and Rescue. We serve of the people we give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Tomorrow marks the 8th anniversary of the Philippines' victory over China at the Permanent Court of Arbitration in 2016. The International Tribunal's decision favored the Philippines nullifying China's claims, particularly the controversial Nine Dash Line. Our coalition, Atin Ito, is calling for this day, July 12, to be officially recognized as West Philippine Sea Day, commemorating this significant milestone in upholding maritime rights and sovereignty. Dante will, will tell us why. The Atin Ito Coalition is a civilian group at the forefront of advocating for Philippine rights in the West Philippine Sea will conduct a program on Friday, July 12. Their aim is to commemorate the 8th anniversary of the Philippines' victory at the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague on July 12, 2016. This is an important victory that we can leverage to rally the international community to push China out of our waters. Kaya ito ay napakalaga, hindi lang actually sa Pilipinas, pero sa mga karatig bansa na, ano rin, na, sina, na inaagawan din ng China ng kanyang uh, ng teritoryo at ng karagatan. This victory invalidated China's bases in the South China Sea, specifically the Nine Dash Line, which is the primary justification for its claims over the West Philippine Sea. The Atinito Coalition calls for making July 12 a permanent observance to celebrate the Philippines' victory and to further assert our rights in the disputed territory. Uh, around 200 volunteers natin magsasama-sama para ipanawagan na i, i ano na natin, itakda na natin yung July 12 bilang West Philippine Sea Day para talagang every year we remember this important historic date and it, we also strengthen yung ating uh, assertion na ang West Philippine Sea ay atin. The group also shares a short film with the public about Atenitu's pioneering civilian supply mission to the West Philippine Sea in December of last year. According to Rafaela David, president of the Aquayan Party and co-convener of the Atenito Coalition, not only did the Philippines benefit from the tribunal decision, but also other countries that are claimants in the South China Sea. So this victory actually is an international uh, uh, landmark na talagang ina-assert yung 200 nautical miles na exclusive economic zone ng mga bansa na nakapalibot sa South China Sea. Kaya talagang uh, mahalagang uh, pagkapanalo ito na nire-recognize hindi lang ng Pilipinas pero buong mundo na ang West Philippine Sea ay atin. It is also important to continue the government's actions such as diplomatic protests against China, especially in incidents where it damages marine resources in the West Philippine Sea. The Philippines' alliances with other countries that advocate for peaceful means such as through multilateral agreements are crucial.
However, the role played by civilians and ordinary citizens in this struggle is also significant. Pero ganyan din yung mga ordinaryong mamamayan na nakitang meron din tayong pwedeng iambag dito sa issue na ito. Kaya talagang very important yung civilian uh, activities and hopefully itong all hands on deck, ibig sabihin whole of nation approach ay mas uh, mapagbibay pa para talagang maipanalo natin yung kampanyang ito. According to the Ateneto Coalition, it is important to raise awareness among all Filipinos, whether inside or outside the country, about the false information being spread by China and to assert everyone that the West Philippine Sea belongs to the Philippines. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck the waters near Sultan Kudarat on Thursday morning, according to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or PhilVox. Seismologists reported that the earthquake occurred 133 kilometers southwest of Palimbang town at approximately 10.13 a.m. The tremor was felt at varying intensities across several locations. Intensity 4 in Jose Abad Santos, Davao, Occidental Intensity 3 in Mati City, Davao Oriental, and in Clan Sarangani. Intensity 2 was felt in Maragusan, Davao de Oro, Tagum City, Davao del Norte, Libungan, Tulunan, South Cotabato, Kiamba, Maitum, Malapatan, Sarangani, Coronadal City, South Cotabato, and General Santa City. The intensity one was recorded in Davao City, Tantangan, South Cotabato, and Lebak Sultan Kudarat. Fieldbox reports no expected damage from the earthquake, but aftershocks are likely. The Members Church of God International or MCGI holds feasts dedicated to God in various parts of the Philippines. Meanwhile, a non-governmental organization or NGO recognizes the assistance to solo parents by MCGI through this event. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. celebration of the feast dedicated to God by the Members Church of God International or MCGI on Thursday, July 11 was a success. Thousands of beneficiaries were assisted through free stores, medical missions, free meals, government services, legal consultations, wish granting, and more. Among those helped during the MCGI feast dedicated to God was Mrs. Erlinda Amosco, a 56-year-old widow from Tondo, Manila with three children. With the collective help of MCGI brethren, she was able to purchase construction materials to repair her home in preparation for the rainy season. Po, malaki pong tulong po yun kasi po may alaga po ako na PWD po. po marami pong natutulungan po sa awa po ng Panginoon. Salamat po ng marami sa mga kapatid po. A non-governmental organization or NGO admired the assistance provided by MCGI to solo parents. According to the National Council for Solo Parents, this is not the first time MCGI has extended help to their sector. Moreover, the organization was praised for conducting large-scale medical missions and free stores. Ito ay very timely kasi isa sa pinakamalaking problem na talaga ng ating mga kababayan yung sa kalusugan, yung sa kanilang mga uh, pangangailangan sa ating mga government agencies ano, napakahirap pumila, napakatagal, dito very accessible tapos uh, wala ka pang babayaran, busog ka pa <laughs> so, Ito ay napakagandang programa na servisyo. No? Ito yung tinatawag natin talaga na tunay na public service dahil walang pinipili eh. Uh, lahat nakikinabang at lahat ay uh, yung pangangailangan nila natutugunan. So ito ay talagang ika nga eh, isang uh, testament sa ating paniniwala sa Diyos na ang pagsisilbi sa kapwa ay walang ibinubunan na sa Ito.
Ito ay bahagi ng uh, aming pananampalataya sa MCGI o ang members po ng Church of God International na makagawa ng uh, kabutihan na tulong-tulong. Ito ay uh, sinasabi ng banal na kasulatan na nasa sa isa't jis ng Galatia na samantalang tayo ay may pagkakataon, magsigawa tayo ng mabuti sa lahat, lalong-lalo na sa mga kasangbahay sa pananampalataya. Kaya kami po sa MCGI ay laging sa tulong ng Diyos ay bukas sa lahat ng ating mga kapwa-tao. Ano man po ang inyong religion, ano man po ang inyong wika, ano man ang inyong lahi, ano man po ang inyong kulay. Fellow Filipinos also appreciated the government agency's provision of services during the MCGI fees dedicated to God. Malaking bagay pong tulong sa mga kapwa natin na ma makatulong sa mong ganitong gawain na hindi na masyadong maabala sa ano natutulungan talaga. Parte pagkain, marami, <laughs> libre. <laughs> Maganda po dahil nare-resolve ba kung ano man ang problema na hindi mo naiintindihan para wala po kung ano man pa ang mga kwan, pa problema ninyo ay lapit na lang po dito sa mga sangay ng ating mga gobyerno. Ang MCGI po ay nakabukas kung Paano man kami makapaglilingkod at paano man pong sa maliit na paraan kami ay maging maliit na kasangkapan ng Panginoon na ang kanyang kabutihan ay makarating sa ating mga kapwa-tao. Walang pagtatangi kagaya nga po ng sinasabi ng dos uno ng Santiago na Mga kapatid ko ang wika, yayamang mayroon kayong pananampalataya ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo na Panginoon ng Kaluwalhatian. ay huwag magtatangi sa mga tao. Dahil ang Diyos naman po, kagaya din na sinasabi naman ni Pablo, hindi nagtatangi ng mga tao. The MCGI does not hold fees dedicated to God only once. Apart from the Philippines, it is also conducted in other parts of the world. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of Psalms 29.2. It says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And those are the reasons behind the news July 11, 2024, reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am RK Liorca, live from Thailand. We serve the people, we give glory to God.